Are you ready for tonight? Every prophetic service such as this, every time we're gathered before God, receiving is based on atmospheres. Please listen carefully. Receiving in the spirit is based on the atmospheres that are created. And there are essentially in every service, there are at least four atmospheres that allow for receiving. Number one, very quickly, is the atmosphere of praise and worship. In the atmosphere of praise and worship, receiving is easy. Receiving is possible. The atmosphere of praise and worship. Every time you find people praising God, you find people worshiping God, then there is an opportunity for someone to receive any and all spiritual blessings. Are you learning already? Number two, the second atmosphere is the atmosphere of prayer and supplication. Every time the atmosphere of prayer and supplication is created, then the opportunity and the possibility for reception in the spirit is also there. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray. Mark eleven twenty four. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In the atmosphere of prayer, desires are converted to expectations. Desires are converted to manifestations in the atmosphere of prayer. Are you ready for number three? The third atmosphere that helps believers to receive from God is the atmosphere of the word. When the word is taught, not just when the word is present, the atmosphere of the word, the teaching ministry. Because the teaching of the word imparts understanding and it alters your mindset, it helps you to receive from God. This is very important. I'm defining for you the atmospheres upon which you receive spiritually. Your first assignment is not to desire to receive. Your first assignment is to see to it that these spiritual atmospheres are created. If these atmospheres are not created, like we study in physics and aerodynamics, any plane can fly, but not under every atmosphere. The first assignment of the engineers and all who are involved in flying and aerodynamics is to perpetually simulate the atmosphere that makes for flight. This is how it is too in the spirit. If you can create the atmosphere for praise and worship, then you have created the atmosphere to receive. If you can create an atmosphere for prayer and supplication, then you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number three, if you can create the atmosphere where the word of God is accurately communicated, you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number four, the atmosphere of the prophetic. When you create a prophetic atmosphere where prophetic speakings can come to your life, you have also created the atmosphere to receive. Men receive in atmospheres of praise and worship Men receive in atmospheres of prayer and supplication. Men receive in atmospheres of the word when it is accurately taught, communicated. Men receive in prophetic atmospheres. Let me add one more for your understanding. The final atmosphere, maybe not the final, but at least the last for now, is the atmosphere of giving and thanksgiving. In fact, all kinds of giving. In the atmosphere of giving, there is also receiving. Because the giver, according to scripture, is a sower. And every time you sow according to Genesis 8.22, it says, for as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Shall not cease. This is a divine verdict. So in the atmosphere of sowing, an atmosphere of giving, and I hope you know giving is not just limited to money. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving, gratitude from your heart unto God is a seed you are sowing. It says, let the people praise him and then the earth shall yield her increase and even God, our God will bless us. So people who seem to always walk in the harvest, 
people who seem to always walk in divine rewards, they are not just people who are necessarily extraordinary Christians. They have understood the implication of creating spiritual atmospheres. You find out that someone is perpetually being favored. You find out that someone is perpetually walking under open heavens. I can tell you, it's not because God decided to isolate them and bless them at the expense of another. Because the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. What has happened is that by mentorship or understanding, they have come into the, the, a comprehension of the implication of atmospheres. So for one, through your prayer and praise, you perpetually create an atmosphere, say for instance, of praise and worship. You find people who praise and worship God all the time, they will seldom be without help. God will always raise help for them. Always raise help. At midnight, the Bible says, you see what Paul and Silas did? The Bible says they prayed. They created that atmosphere. Added it with the atmosphere of prayer. And this time around, it was not an angel that came. When, when Peter prayed alone, God did not come. It was an angel that came. But when Paul and Silas prayed and added another atmosphere of praise and worship, God himself came, not an angel. And you see the difference in the way deliverance was done. The angel gently opened the doors. God came and scattered the foundations. Hmm. Hallelujah. Then the Bible tells us that and he, as he taught, the he being Jesus, the power of God was present to heal. Someone's healing was at the mercy of that atmosphere. Once upon a time, the apostle was preaching and there was someone who had been lame, sick, and he looked at him discerning that he had faith to be healed. In the atmosphere where the word of God is taught, the sent word, you see that now? You are able to receive it into your spirit like it is happening to you now. Whilst I'm teaching, you may not even know what is happening to you, but there is an incorruptible seed. You are receiving something. You get up and find out the pain is no longer there. You get up and find out you can throw the crush and walk away. Don't ask how it will happen. Just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, so also you cannot know the ways of God. There is an equation to miracles that men cannot explain. We can only explain how the word of God comes to unite with the spirit. But anything beyond that realm is beyond the scope of our intelligence. That one only God can feel that equation and I have taught you one plus one plus God is equal to the answer he puts there one plus one is two mathematically but one plus one plus God the only person who can answer that is God himself hmm. I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive, I receive, I manifest, I manifest your power, your power, and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest the prayer, your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Sing, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. May your life be a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'm speaking over you. May your life be a sign and a wonder that when men look at you, it will be clear that God's hand is upon you. It will be clear that God's grace is upon you. Evident and unmistakable in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, there is no doubt when God works with men. There is no doubt when grace rests upon men. There is no doubt when light comes to men. There is no doubt when the Spirit of God works with men. Are we together now? I'm preparing your heart for the many things that you are going to receive. Because there are many of us, your life is ordinary. I'm telling you, you cannot bring glory to God that way. The Bible says we are His workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should work in them. God has preordained. There is a preordination. I have taught you here and I will repeat myself for your emphasis that God's goal ultimately is not just to take us to heaven but that your life and my life will eventually be a manifestation of the glory of God. I reckon it says that the sufferings of this present time, Romans 8, 18, are not worthy to be compared with the glory, the glory that shall be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed in us. What is glory? The multifaceted dimensions of God. His wisdom is his glory. His power is his glory. His favor is his glory. Speed is a manifestation of his glory. Restoration is an expression of his glory. Prosperity is an expression of his glory. Everything that can make God, men praise God through you, God is willing to make available in your life. You have to believe this. The Bible says, oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness, listen, and his marvelous, his wonderful works to the children of men. There is what God can do to the sons of men that will cause men to praise God. It says, you turn my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy. The Bible says that you will be given beauty for ashes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, he says, that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Galatians chapter 1 24, he says, and they glorified God in me. John 15 8, herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 8 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. John 15, my apologies, 15 8 and 15 16. 15 8 and 15 16, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. 